On Styles and Watkins, we are back 10 a.m., 2 p.m., and we are joined by NFL Hall of Fame QB Warren Moon. And that's all thanks to Jiffy Lube, Sacktown Sports Road Trip to Radio Row in Las Vegas is brought to you by our friends at Jiffy Lube. When it's time for a road trip, visit Jiffy Lube for all your automotive maintenance needs. Jiffy Lube is your road trip headquarters. Warren Moon, thank you so much for taking the time. Thanks for having me on, guys. Really appreciate it. I'll go back with your producer here <laughs> a long way. Me and, me, and, me and Jay, you know, people probably think we're dating. We've been together. <laughs> I love you, Warren. I love you. You know, that? well, that's I love right. you too, but not like that. Not right, 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 not right, like right. That. exactly. And in Warren, we were talking a little bit before we got on here about what you're here representing the NFL alumni community programs, the Better Business Bureau, heart of Texas Foundation. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, uh, this program is being launched today, and it's being launched in uh, San Antonio, mm -hmm. uh, Austin, and also Fort Worth. That's where we're going to start the program. But it's going to be a nationwide program, especially in the 30. Two markets of the National Football League, but basically, it's it's NFL alum, alumni that have uh, learned all the different lessons from sports mm -hmm. and what made them successful. But everybody in uh, in in communities can't be an athlete, so right. but you can be involved in business and things like that. So with those same lessons that we learn, we're going to try and translate those lessons into young business leaders to teach them what it takes to be successful in business. So that's basically what that program is all about. No, that's awesome. And I, I mean, I know it's it's just a huge part of, of any athlete's post career is, is to kind of get into that kind of stuff. And you see, you know, Magic Johnson doing big things in the business world. Do you have any inspirations in terms of, you know, where you kind of picked up the 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 charitable? I mean, of course, always being yeah. charitable, but, uh, you know, where you really found uh, where you wanted to, what lanes you wanted to fill in your post career? You know, I think a lot of mine started just from my mom, the way she was giving mm. in our community. Yeah. You know, she, we didn't have a whole lot, but whatever she had, she offered to different people yeah. in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that I was uh, able to be successful and, and give back uh, because there was a lot of programs that gave to me when I was a young kid growing up, whether it was a vacation Bible school at my church, whether it was a boys club or Cub Scouts or Boy Scouts. Uh, all the different sports I was involved in, all those things kept me on the straight and narrow and right. kept me away from the gangs and all the different other stuff that was in the neighborhoods where I grew up. So now I'm at a point or I've been at a point uh, where I could give back to some of those same kids who come out of those same environments. Uh, maybe I can change some lives the way you know people changed my life and kept me going in the right direction. So that's kind of basically why I do it. And as an NFL quarterback, you have an ability to, yeah. to, to motivate people and, and, and um, make change in people's lives. You either choose to not do anything about it or you choose to do about it. And I just chose to do about it. Talking to Warren Moon, NFL Hall of Fame quarterback. Now, Warren, you had a bit of an unconventional track to really? the NFL. <laughs> the CFL, <laughs> five straight titles in the CFL. Do you see any, I guess, similarities in your story and maybe Brock Purdy and just the idea of people maybe doubting him based on where he was drafted or not necessarily being the guy that we all watch at the combine or we didn't watch him play in the college football playoffs, something like that. Does it feel like he's had to climb a, a, a larger mountain than some of these other guys? Well, I think our journey, everybody has their own journey. His mm -hmm. journey was totally different than mine because first of all, he was drafted, right? Right, and he was right. drafted in the seventh round. Mm -hmm. I had twelve rounds in our draft, and I wasn't drafted in any of those. Yeah, man, uh, and a lot of it didn't have anything to do with me playing quarterback. Right. <laughs> yeah. Know? So yeah, there's differences there, but I understand what you're talking about. You know, Brock is is having to live down the fact that he was Mr. Irrelevant, and mm -hmm. people think that because he wasn't drafted high, he shouldn't be as good, and because he he's being successful is because of all the people that are around him. Well, Tom Brady was a sixth-round draft pick. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he played pretty well, too. Yeah. yeah. And uh, when you win seven Super Bowls as a sixth-round draft pick, what are they what are they saying about him? Does does Brock Purdy have to win, you know, six Super Bowls now to, to, to all of a sudden be good enough to play in the league? I mean, the kid went to the uh, NFC Championship game last year. He sure got did. hurt. Mm -hmm. Who knows? He could have been in the Super Bowl last year. And now he's got his team in the Super Bowl in his second year. He's got a lot of gro uh, growth ahead of him. But everybody keeps wanting to label him as a guy that's just on a very talented team. Show right. me a team that's not good, that's talented. I mean, that's, that's, right. that's, that's, that's good, that's not talented. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's exactly what I was going to ask you is, is, I mean, a lot of Brock's criticism is the fact that he has tons of talent around him. 
And yet there's been San Francisco 49ers quarterbacks who have had tons of talent around them and found success. Oh, my God. What do you yeah. feel about just that conversation and just your two cents on it's all that? It's just too bad that he's been labeled that way but, you know, by a lot of the media yeah. has labeled that, him that. And, and he's having to live with that and having to answer those questions yeah. every week. All he does is keep advancing through the playoffs. He won two of those playoff games for them with his legs and his arm. Mm -hmm. He had to bring them from behind, first of all, because their defense hasn't played that great yeah. throughout the playoffs. And, uh, he, you know, last week he has the, the big runs, the big scrambles, the big throws. I mean, what more does the kid have to do uh, to, to, uh, to show everybody that he can play quarterback and he's really good? Now, is he elite? I don't know that yet. Mm -hmm. He hasn't been in the league long enough. Right. But right. what makes an elite quarterback to me is guys who they take – what the game plan is and they can run that game plan to perfection. But what happens when a play breaks down? What happens when a linebacker comes through un unblocked? What happens when a defensive end comes off the edge and beats his guy? Can you make those extended plays? Can you make those special plays where you have to use your legs to get outside the pocket and buy time and make a throw or, or you have to make a scramble? He's showing that he can do that too. And that's what starts to make elite guys elite. And the Lamar Jackson's when the, Patrick Mahomes, when the Josh Allens are making those types of plays, that's what make them special players. So I don't know. I, I feel bad for the kid because here he is in the Super Bowl and still having to right. answer questions if he's good enough or not. Yeah. 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 And trust me, that that term game manager has been used probably about 100,000 times just today. Just Every today. quarterback is a game manager. Yep. Mm. Every good one, at least, right? Mark my lips from that. Every quarterback is a game manager. That's what you're asked to do as a quarterback is to manage the game plan, to do the things, to audible when you need to audible, to get your team in the right protection, to know where your blitz reads are. All those things come within your game plan, right? But, again, when something in one of those plays breaks down, what can you do to make a negative play into a positive play? And that's what the elite guys were able to do. But every quarterback is asked to manage the game no matter what offense he's in. Mm. Talking to Warren Moon, NFL Hall of Fame quarterback. And, Warren, you alluded to some reasons why you were not drafted, even, in, even when there were 12 rounds. And I've been thinking about this, so hang with me here. When you hear the term now dual threat quarterback, I've thought about this the last play uh, against uh, the last play against the Packers, right? And Love maybe had an opportunity to run. Do you think that there are any situations where maybe black quarterbacks decide not to use their legs because they want to stay away from the stigma? of being that running quarterback, even when it's the right decision. Because sometimes I'm watching, I'm thinking, you got it right there, but they want to show that they can see the field and they're not just, you know, using the escape valve to run immediately. Maybe it's maybe it's just me watching, but sometimes I look and thinking, I wonder, am I making this up or do they not want to be known as a quote-unquote dual threat or running quarterback? You know, I'm sure that's something they think about when they have a chance to think, but I think mm. in the in the – heat of a battle i don't know if you're thinking that when you when you make a throw like he made in that game that, and i think that was the only mistake he made in that game it really yeah. surprised me that he made that yeah. throw not the fact that that he didn't run it but there was another guy right in front of him that he probably could have threw a shorter pass to but other than that that's about the only um big mistake he made in that football game but it happened to be the biggest uh, I remember Donovan McNabb when he was playing at one point he was criticized by the NAACP that he wasn't scrambling enough and that <laughs> he was staying what? in the pocket on purpose and wasn't using his legs. Yeah, if you ever talk to Donald That's and ask him about around. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was once called an Uncle Tom by a, a, a African-American reporter because I didn't break the single game record when I had a chance to break it when I was with the Houston Oilers. So you just never can – you never can satisfy everybody. Right. You know, I decided to come out of the game because we were winning and there was no reason for me to stay in there and just keep throwing the ball. I only needed like 30-something more yards, but I wasn't going to stay in and just keep throwing it. So, yeah, I was called that by this guy. Um, so, man, you just never – you just can't satisfy everyone about everything that you're doing. But um, I hopefully that guys are able to use – the right judgment when they make a play whether with with their legs or with their arm being able to have the ability to do that a lot of guys don't have that ability so the the question is when do you when do you make the move to use your legs when do you use the when do you use your arm and if you have that ability to do that and that's what I think Patrick does a great job yeah. of he knows when to run he knows when to 
to throw the football even though he's on the move. Warren, I, I'm a Minnesota Vikings fan, so I got to see – I've seen some of your later career stuff, but when you talk about Patrick Mahomes, what's one thing – from Patrick Mahomes' game that you just watch and you're like, I, I cannot believe that a guy can do this. His, his fearlessness. He's just mm, – he, he doesn't see me fear as anything, yeah. you know. He really doesn't. Um, and I love that about his game. Uh, he'll take on anybody. He'll take a hit and throw the football. Like, he took a big hit in the playoff game. Uh, uh, who was that against? The one where he scrambled all around. I think it was – I want to say it was against – Baltimore, and he ended up throwing like a wounded duck pass, and and yes, and yeah, Kelsey yes, 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 yes. reached out and dove, and he took a tremendous shot yeah. on that play. But he held the ball as long as he possibly yeah. could until he finally got rid of it. And those are those fearless type plays that that I have really have a lot of respect for him for. Warren, I, I, we you know we're sitting here and and making sure we do our our research on every on everyone talking to Warren Moon. NFL Hall of Fame quarterback, and and I'm I'm double checking this thing. I know the Wi-Fi has been a little slow, but <laughs> you played till you were 44. That's I, incredible. I know. That's incredible. And, and we're I can talking, still sit here and talk about it. I can walk right. away from here without limping. Yeah. yeah. You know, the good Lord has been really, really good to me. He blessed me um, with taking care of my health while I played. I had injuries, but nothing that was really major. No, like ACLs mm-hmm. or separated shoulders or anything like that. And then I took really good care of myself. I think right. I had a lot to do with it as well. And then I was smart about when I did run and when I did throw. Right. Yeah, I, I learned very quickly when I came in the NFL after I got hit by a strong safety named Donnie Shell, who's mm-hmm. in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I'm like, I'm staying in the pocket from now on. I'm just going <laughs> to dump the ball off to the rest of my guys. Right, right. All right, Warren, before we get you out of here, we need your pick. Do the Niners get number six or does Patrick Mahomes cement the Chiefs as a dynasty? Well, you know, I played my last two years in Kansas City. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I got kind of chief, a little bit of Chiefs blood still in my veins. Mm-hmm. And I met Patrick when he was a uh, rookie coming in the league because we were represented wow. by the same guy, yeah. Lee Steinberg. So I know him. Mm-hmm. So I'm going with the Chiefs. And I, I think if the game is close, which I think it's going to be, he'll find a way to either make the play to win the game or if he has the ball with three or four minutes left, he'll find a way to run the clock out. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Warren Moon, thank you so much. NFL Hall of Fame QB, and thank you for everything you're doing with the NFL Alumni Community Programs, Better Business Bureau, Heart of Texas Foundation. Thank you so much, Warren. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for having me on, guys. Really appreciate it. All right. Enjoy your week. Same to you. Got to be careful.